future educational opportunities. There are two kind there are two contexts that I think are very, very important. This is February 1946, and millions of veterans are coming home, black and white. Millions of them are coming home, and for because of their veterans' benefits, including the GI Bill, there's a lot of them that want to go to college. And Hester's major concern was how were African Americans veterans, but all African Americans in general, going to be able to compete in the marketplace of talent and ideas when the state of Texas hasn't even provided any to speak of uh, higher educational opportunity for its own citizens. And so um, that was the first thing that President Painter was confronted with. I'll give President Painter this. At least he was honest about it. When he was asked, what have you done for returning African-American families? The answer was direct. Practically no. You got to give the guy credit for being honest. It's a reprehensible answer, but at least it's honest. Mm -hmm. And so after some haggling back and forth, uh, Hester looked at uh, Sweat, and Sweat asked for permission to speak. And he talked about wanting to become a lawyer. And he didn't want to wait for the state of Texas to come up with what would amount to be a makeshift sham lawsuit. And handed paper his transcript from Wiley College, which by itself qualifying him for admission to the University of Texas Law School. Now, it's hard for us to believe that that's all you needed back then. That's all you needed. <laughs> you needed back then a degree <coughs> from an accredited four-year institution. And Wiley College was that in 1946. So Painter took the um, application, what amounts to the application, said that he wasn't officially accepting it, but that he would forward it to the um, Attorney General for an opinion. And you got to give Peter this time. In the letter he, in which he asked for the Attorney General's opinion, he was honest again. He just flat said, this person is academically qualified and qualified in every way save it except for the fact that he is a Negro. Got to give the guy credit for honesty. And I would argue in this book that this, you know, this actually, whether he wanted to or not, this actually aided Thurgood Marshall in the sweat case because it was an admission of naked racism. The only reason I'm not admitting this guy out Now, there had been precedent set for that, too. The president of the University of Oklahoma did the same thing with Ada Lysipua, who had, he was basically the sweat version in Oklahoma. He basically said the same thing. Only reason, and it was because of the Texas Constitution, <coughs> Texas laws on, on, on the books at the time. And uh, so the attorney general basically relied on Constitution of 1876 in Texas, which called for the segregation of uh, whites and non-whites into separate inst institutions. So that was the beginning of the Sweat versus Painter case. Within a couple of months, the NAACP filed suit, and it took four years to get to the Supreme 